There is a black box warning. Sure. We should talk about it. This is now on this map. On MSS map, yes. MSS map. Yeah. What is the black box warning? What is that about? So early in the clinical trials in the adults, um, what they found was is that, you know, so this is a preventive treatment. It doesn't treat acute bleeds. And so when you have an acute bleed in an inhibitor patient, you still have to use one of those bypassing agents, APCCs or a recombinant factor seven. And what they didn't know is in the trial is that people were using the same doses that they were using before they got started on emicizumab. And this product elevates your ability to form clots. And then if you use the same dose of something that elevates your ability to form a clot, what happened was is they were forming excessive clots and, and the thrombin generation was through the roof. And so what they discovered was that patients, there were a few patients that developed thrombotic microangiopathy, so not from the standard way, which was Adams TS13 de de uh, deficiency or an antibody. And uh, there were a couple patients that developed uh, blood clots, uh, one developed a sinus thrombosis. And the unifying factor they found was that when they used over 100 units per kilo in a 24-hour period of that APCC, that's when they saw it. So there was a DEER investigator letter, letter sent out. Once that was rectified and people didn't use that, we haven't seen any more events like that. Okay. And so that's the important thing is that they made the change and we haven't seen that issue, but that is a clear black box warning on the label and I think it's important that people understand the risk. What do you do other than stop the drug? If you've got somebody who's got one of these black box terrible occurrences, what do you do? So uh, the black box doesn't tell you not necessarily to not use the drug, but I think most clinicians would avoid it at, at, at all costs. What they did find during uh, clinical trials was that this was dose related. If you uh, use under a particular dose with a FIBA with, uh, or APCC with emicizumab, they did not see these events at all. So these black boxes, to be very clear, that's emicizumab with APCC. Save. So yes. left alone, that black box is not a, doesn't doesn't apply. Right. Okay. What about breakthrough bleeding with this? So <clears throat> bleeding with inhibitor patients now you can treat with Novo Seven. I do have a patient myself who's on this, and we use FIBA at a low dose. Okay. So you can use those in addition. So there is a pathway for each of these things. Yes. And the black box is a very specific black box yes. for a specific combination. That's correct. It's important to note, though, that, again, this is a disruptive uh, drug because the frequency of bleeding, uh, in my own experience, and that's been published, is that uh, these patients haven't really, don't really bleed. Really? Yes. That, you just said in a, in a broadcast about hemophilia, Yes. these patients don't really bleed. Right. That's insane. Yeah. Insanely great. So in the context that if you look at all the factor preparations that are out there, if you take them as directed, the bleeding rates, what they call annualized bleeding rates, are somewhere between one and three, zero to three a year. And this is in that same ballpark, zero to one, something like that. My own experience treating about 20 patients now is that they don't bleed. Is that the interim guidance document? Is that what you're talking about from yeah. MASAC? Yeah, so, so um, that, that, that group, MASAC, which I'm a member of, um, it's a group of hematologists sort of set the standards, make comments on things, and you know, try to get ahead of issues. And so they made a comment about that and they supported that strategy. The FDA obviously wanted that strategy, but we supported that strategy as well. But we're actually looking into whether you can give low doses of that FIBA, and there are certainly cases in which that has worked, and we have a case right now that we're actually treating with low-dose FIBA. That's the key is close management, low-dose FIBA, and right now it's still a, a backup option to recombinant 7.